today we're going to test the strength and durability of three different types of UV resin. I'll be using Monocure's Rapid and Flex, as well as this new iFun Tough resin that I found. I start by picking three models that look like they have some fairly breakable parts, and then I'm going to add supports to those, and using my Formware 3D software, I will print it in the different profiles according to each resin's needs. But first I'm going to put supports on, which I really do like with this software that I can choose where the supports are specifically and move them around as opposed to just being stuck with whatever is generated from the software and not being able to move them or have them appear in the right places. And I really like how this program works, which is why I paid for it. Normally I don't pay for software, but this one was worth it. Once everything looks okay and well supported and there won't be any issues, we will go ahead and slice those for each of the resin types. I will be printing these on my Anycubic Photon. It is the only resin printer I have at the moment. If anyone feels like donating a resin printer to me, I would gladly accept. But in the meantime, it works well for my needs. On my models, I will change my profile to the Monoflex and then slice it with that. In this software, I can go into the configuration, into my machine, into my print profiles, and then for each resin type that I have, I can specify the settings to whatever is recommended by the manufacturer, which I highly recommend as a good starting point. You can then tweak it from there to make sure that your prints come out just the way you want them. I haven't used the tough resin before, but on the website on Amazon, it does show the specifications that they recommend for the tough resin, which I will use these specifications. They do have slightly different specifications on each of these pictures, which is a little odd, but I just kind of take the average or do what sounds best and put those in my profile that I make specifically for the iPhone toughness. You will also notice that there's a place to put in a price per liter. I didn't buy that particular 100 and whatever dollar resin. I bought just a half liter for about $39.99, so it's about $80 a liter of the tough resin. Also on Amazon for the Monocure Rapid, it's about $90, and for the Flex, it's about $95, but it's cheaper if you buy it straight from Monocure through Australia where it's about $60 a liter before shipping. But even with the shipping, it's cheaper through Monocure a lot of the time. Once our files are sliced, we're ready to print. So we'll go ahead and shake up our resin. We're gonna start with the Rapid, and then I will also add a 50-50 Rapid and Flex mixture for the second set. And then the third set will be just the toughness. And rather than show them separately, here is all three of them being printed at the same time, even though they weren't printed at the exact same time. Because I only have the one printer, you know. Sadly, I did not get a time lapse for you. I didn't have enough room to do it. But here's the first set in the rapid resin. Gonna pop them off the build plate, and then I'm going to use a paper towel to wipe off the excess resin as best I can before then using alcohol and cleaning them off as good as I can, agitating it in there, just shaking it up, loosening that off and cleaning it. And once it's all nice and clean, I will then again use a new clean paper towel to dry it off. carefully remove the supports. Any of the smaller ones, I will use some tweezers to help get those out, but I will just do that for all of them. 
until they look like great little miniatures that we can then see how well they hold up against the tile test. Yes, the tile test. I did this video at my mom's house where she has tile kitchen floors. And the saying is, tile always wins because anytime something is dropped on that tile, it shatters. So we'll see if any of these minis shatter. This is with the flex and it has that little bit of a film that it always leaves. I don't know why exactly, maybe because of the way that it's designed. It's more of a watery liquid, but every time I print with it, I'll have this little bit of film that I have to clean off the bottom, which isn't a big deal, but just be aware to make sure that you have all that cleaned up in between each print. The tough stuff is like tar, it's sludge. It's the opposite. Rather than the flex being watery, this is thick and I don't know, sludge is just the best way to describe it. And even when I get it cleaned off, it has that sludgy look and feel. Even though it, the resin doesn't come off, it seems like it's gonna be like a sticky or kind of a gummy feel. Onto the test. Starting with the normal, we will push it off of this table onto the tile and see what happens. Sadly, it didn't shatter. It's just fine. Next. Also fine. That's disappointing. Strangely, no breaks. And I have to pause it here, because it should have broken. I've had other minis dropped from less high break in multiple places in one drop. So I'm a little bit miffed by this, especially since right after making this video, I got a thing of ketchup out of the fridge, out of the bottom drawer, so maybe five inches above the ground, and accidentally dropped it on the tile floor. And yes, it shattered the cap. Now there's a lot of things to take into account. Those were printed with other resins, sure. But also, they had been cured and sitting around a lot longer than like five minutes after being printed. So perhaps over time they had become more brittle. Anyway, continuing with the test, we know what's going to happen with the rest, so we'll just go through it real quick. They all survived just fine, so I'm going to have to force them to break. And I'm going to start with the left to right, the normal, the flex, and then the tough. And just force it to break and then just see in general how well they can handle stress. The normal rapid resin doesn't usually bend this far. I think it's because it hasn't been sitting for very long. And it finally breaks. Now for the flexible mixture. Uh, that normally bends a lot better, like this one does. Although this one goes really far. So far that I can't get it to break. I mean, I could keep going, but why? That's just impressive. So it's a little overkill, but if you want really strong minis, the tough resin is the way to go. It is definitely the champion of strength in resins. I'm sure it's meant for other things, but at about the same price point as the other resins, use whatever you think is best for whatever you use it for. But as far as miniatures go, it works really well, other than the weird sludginess. So overall, it's just how we expected the normal rapid resin is not as durable as the flexible. The flexible has a little bit more flexibility. It's probably all you will need for miniatures. And the tough is just amazing. Super flexible, can have so much of a bend and still come right back to where it was. I can basically make this guy wave to you and he'll be just fine. Just twist his arm off, it won't matter. But you know what, I'm not quite done. I'm going to revisit this months later, after having broken them a bunch, and we're going to see how flexible and durable they are now. Here's some of the leftovers. I kept bending them until they broke, but there are three good ones left. From the left to right, the normal, 
the flex, and the tough resin. And of course, this is months later. So let's see, it has a little bit of flexibility, not near as much as it did when it was very first printed, which is what I expected. And going through each one, the flexibility is a little bit less, except for, of course, on the tough resin, which seems to be just as flexible as the day it was printed. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, patrons, for your support and helping me to make these videos. If you're interested in becoming a patron, please check out my Patreon page and make sure to select the tier that fancies you best and perhaps gives you some discounts at my store on 3dmtabletop.com where you can get Dungeons & Dragons dice, miniatures, DM tools, accessories, make me custom make some dice for you, and lots of other things. Thank you for watching, I hope this was beneficial to you. If you like this video, please make sure to click that thumbs up, share it with all your friends and, you know, people that you're planning to TPK later, and subscribe to my channel.